Good morning. This is Daily Prayer with Pastor Lance from Our Savior Lutheran Church in West Columbia, South Carolina. And I welcome you for a little bit of study and the opportunity to pray with me. Okay, uh, we're going to spend another couple of days in Exodus. And now we're at, after all the plagues have gone through, the Egyptians are let the Israelites go and of course they're going to change their mind and it brings up an interesting question about where do we see God you know what's what's your where when do you see God uh, some people might see God in the beautiful sunset or in the face of a child um, there are lots of different places to see God, but not all of them really confer what the fullness of God is all about. We'll talk about that in a minute, though. Let's listen to our story. Tomorrow we'll have the parting of the Red Sea, but this is right before that event, and it is the Israelites being led through into the wilderness, and they know which direction to go because there's a pillar of cloud before them during the day, and at night there's a pillar of fire. Let's listen in. A reading from Exodus, chapter 13. When Pharaoh let the people go, God did not lead them by way of the land of the Philistines, although that was nearer. For God thought, if the people face war, they may change their minds and return to Egypt. So God led the people by the roundabout way of the wilderness towards the Red Sea. The Israelites went up out of the land of Egypt prepared for battle. And Moses took with him the bones of Joseph, who had required a solemn oath of the Israelites, saying, God will surely take notice of you, and then you must carry my bones with you from here. They set out from Sukkoth and camped at Etham on the edge of the wilderness. The Lord went in front of them in a pillar of cloud by day to lead them along the way, and in a pillar of cloud by night, to give them light, so that they might travel by day and by night. Neither the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night, left its place in front of them. Alrighty, so there, they have something to follow. I always crack up when I try to read very historical interpretations of the scriptures, and they say, well, this may have been a volcano. I don't think the Israelites would know what a volcano is and how to separate that from a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. What it is, is an assurance of God's presence to the Israelites as they're headed into the wilderness. A reminder, a physical reminder that they can see and perhaps hear uh, the cloud moving through in the sky, the uh, fire lighting up the night sky so day or night no matter how dark how light they know that god is present with them all right and so like i said you know we can see in a beautiful sunset perhaps something about god or in the face of a child or what have you there's all kinds of things but none of them tell us about god's saving love or of god's grace towards us or that, or anything about our own human condition. When Martin Luther was just a monk, he had a, a confessor, kind of his boss, and Luther was a bit nutty at this time and, and would go into Staupitz, Johann Staupitz was the man's name, he'd go into Staupitz and just, you know, confess for hours since that he had committed since the last time he was at confession, which was probably just the day before. And he was constantly, and he doubted God's forgiveness. And Staupitz used to tell him something to look towards. Just like the Israelites looked at a pillar of cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night, so 24-7 they knew they were in the presence of God. God was with them. And Staupitz used to tell Luther, when Luther was doubting himself and cringing, Schaupitz would say, Martin, look to the cross. Look to the cross. 
This is our crucifix, or the top half of it, of our crucifix here at Our Savior Lutheran Church. And this is what we use during Lent and during Holy Week. Uh, and it's a good reminder the crucifix is to have Jesus on the cross. It's that physical reminder. You know, when Jesus died, it went dark from about noon till three, and then through about three o'clock shortly thereafter, Jesus himself died. But he could be seen in the dark. He could be heard screaming out, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? He was there, and a constant reminder of what God's true nature is. The sacrifice for you. I'm going to use a, uh, not one of our prayers out of our hymnal, a prayer, it's a lyric from a song called keep, Lord Keep My Eyes on the Cross and uh, it's written by Carol Roberson, I believe. And here's how it goes. Lord, keep my eyes on the cross to remind me of thy love. For in sin my life was tossed and mercy I'm not worthy of. Help me never to forget with your blood you suffered loss to redeem and set me free. Lord, keep my eyes on the cross. We pray this, pray this in the name of Jesus, our Lord, who taught us as disciples to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Please like this video if you liked it, share it especially if you liked it, and by all means subscribe to our channel so that you might receive content like this Monday through Friday and our full worship services on Sunday. Thank you.